I knew a lot about Starkweather, and he was kind of like the first serial killer in America. And he, he projected this very, very disarming image. It was, everybody could kind of relate to him, you know, his murder spree aside, he was very, very interesting. And he gave us an inside kind of glimpse into the very worst part of ourselves. And yet, it, it, was, it was so in, in, engrossing, his character, his image of himself. And it, it made the country kind of step back a little bit and say, uh, we're more into image than, than reality. And this guy is a reflection of that. Terry never, he always uh, separated the Charles Stark, the, the brutality and the reality of the Starkweather incident. He separated that from what we were doing. He never said, this is that story. He didn't want us to do research. He didn't want me to try to look like Carol Ann. He, he didn't want that. But I think that as a young person, he, like the rest of the country were um, affected on a very deep level. I never got into any of the plays in my high school. And so I was, you know, I was a big theater failure. <laughs> I went to the Strasburg Institute for a few months. Um, I never got to scene class, and I do remember thinking, we, I, I learned something very important that served me well, uh, sense memory. That's really all I learned in, in acting school, but uh, in acting class, and, uh, but it was great. It didn't clutter my mind. <laughs> I had that one tool. <laughs> Uh, and I remember feeling a little self-conscious in class, and I think much more so. I, I never felt that when I was working, because after you're working, you, you've already got the role, and everybody's pulling for you. Everybody wants you to do well. In acting class, I found my experience was that um, it was kind of terrifying, and... and um, I remember the thought crossed my mind that maybe I was far too well adjusted to be an actor because I just, uh, you know, I, but evidently I wasn't. <laughs> and you know, when I first went to New York, everyone I met there said, you have to get rid of that accent. It, you'll never get work. You know, you might as well just get back on the plane. And I, of course, at that early, those early years, I couldn't get rid of my accent um, and I, that was my my Texas roots really it turned out was the thing that opened that first very important door for me when I met Terry on Badlands I done a few Roger Corman films and uh, one of them was the the first one I did Jonathan Demi was producing Joe Viola was directing, it was called Angels Hard As They Come. And that was my first art directing job. And then I think I did a couple others. I worked for uh, Roger's brother, Gene Corman, and we did uh, black exploitation films and like Darktown Strutters and a few others, uh, Slams. And I don't remember all of them, but it was great. In Hollywood at that time, the studios were suffering and a non-union art director, which I was hastily learning to be, uh, you could work pretty much all you wanted. Corman School was like a great film school. It was before there were film schools. And, uh, and you learn, but you learn by doing. And I met with Terry, and it wasn't like a normal meeting. He just said, can you do it? Can you go out uh, to Colorado? We're going to start shooting July 10th. And, and uh, the production company rented me a van. I put all my tools in it and uh, drove to Colorado. And, started getting sets ready. I showed up at Terry's and we had an instant connection and I know what was my Texas roots. We shared of uh, growing up in Texas in the 1950s. 
And it felt like, it felt like, um, you know, when I left there that day, I, I can't remember if he told me he wanted me to do the part, but it, it felt like I was going to do the part because he would say, you know, he was, he was grilling me. Of course, he was probably doing that with every other actress that he met for the role, but he would say, you know, um, how would Holly do this? What would Holly think about this? What, you know, and, and he, 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 he made me feel a part of um, that, the, the process of building that character. He would uh, talk to me about this film he was doing called Badlands. And uh, he, he said, I want you to meet this little girl from Texas. And, and I think she's going to play in the film, too. And I just want to see what the two of you look like together. Would you mind doing a few things? I said, no, not at all. And so I met Sissy Spacek. And we would sit there and do these little scenes. And sometimes we would improvise. And, uh, and this went on for a period of, of weeks and weeks. And, and I never saw the script. And time passed, and uh, and uh, every now and then he'd call me up to to, to come over and, and do another little piece like this, and I would do it. And then uh, and then uh, one day I was on the set of um, Mannix. I was doing an episode of Mannix, and I and I called home. We didn't have cell phones at that time, and to to, to Janet and just you know have public phones that were on the set all the time, and, and I'm calling, I was just saying, hey, she said, oh, by the way, the, uh, Terry Malick called, he said, stop by on your way home. He wanted to talk to you, I said, okay, and so that night on my way home, uh, uh, I, I knocked on his door, and he said, oh, Martin, he said, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, I'm, I'm in a great hurry, but here, take the script and let me know what you think, because uh, I'm thinking uh, that you should, uh, I, I, you should do this film. I said, okay, fine, and um, I went home that night, and I read the script, and it was astonishing. It was by far the best script I'd ever read and the most extraordinary role that I could ever possibly have been offered. And I knew it. And yet I couldn't do it because I was too old. The script called for a 19-year-old boy. I was already 31, and I thought, mm, it's going to spoil uh, the storyline. And so I called him the next day, and I said, uh, Terry, I read the script. And I, it's frankly, it's the best thing I've ever read. And and I I hate to disappoint you, but I don't want to ruin it for you. I, I adore you. I'm I've become so fond of you over these uh, last few months, and uh, I want to support your project, but uh, I can't do it. I'm too old. And he said, Well, uh, okay. He said, I, I know that, but I'm thinking of making the character uh, a bit older, so it, uh, you know you could fit right in. I said. What do you mean? He said, well, I'm offering you the part. If you want to do it, I'd love to have you. And I hung up the phone. And the next morning, I was up very early because I had to be at the studio. We were shooting at Paramount, I believe, at the time. And I, so I had to get up before dawn. And I was driving along P Pacific Coast Highway. It must have been about 5 o'clock in the morning. And the sun was just coming up. And I was playing Bob Dylan's uh, Desolation Row. And... Suddenly it hit me, I was going to play the part of my life. And I knew it then. I knew it. And I couldn't believe it. And I pulled off the highway and I wept with uncontrollable joy and relief because I knew someone had finally seen something in me that I knew was there, but I couldn't get anyone else to see. How much I influenced the the role of Holly Sargis in, in Badlands is really more a question for Terry than for me. I know that when he found out I could twirl, we went straight down to Hollywood Boulevard to, to a music store to get a Starline baton, and then the next thing I knew that Holly was twirling in her front yard when she meets Kit. 